Hey guys, how's it going? Um, on this video, we're going to be putting together a duplex load and you might be thinking, oh, you know, a stacked steel load, you know, you're seeing those popular these days. No, we're going to be stacking powder. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this with right off the bat. I'm not responsible for how you load this. This is a tested load. I've been working on this. Um, pretty extensively for the last couple months trying to get this dialed in um, Alliance steel is off the market and blue dot and other stuff that they make that is um, ideal for non-toxic shot shells um, if you don't know Alliance steel is by far the best for in this case 12 gauge steel shot you can get away with little gun and other things with the smaller bores, like 20 and 28. Those are great, as per the name, little gun. But um, and you can get it to work in 12 in some cases, but it's not as consistent and doesn't work as well as steel. So what we're gonna do is take, and this isn't a new practice. This isn't something I come up with. This is not like, you know, something that I've revolutionized or, or, or come up with. Um, this is something that Tom Roster, um, Elmer Keith in metallic cartridge loading, and I'm sure a bunch of others have done before in the past. What you do is you take a small charge of a fast burning powder and place a pretty hefty charge of a slower burning powder on top of it to get, and you can change the ratios between the two to get the burn rate that you want with obviously the payload in this case and shot shells, what you the desired ballistics. So, um, like I said, this is a this is a, this is an advanced type of practice and technique. Um, this isn't ideal. I would much rather be able to use Alliance Steel, um, really, for a lot more than what I'm using it now, um, just because of its lack of availability. So Alliant has essentially forced my hand into coming up with an alternative that works relatively close to what it is able to achieve ballistically. So the two powders that we're going to be duplexing together, if I can find, uh, hold on. If I can find the jug. Got it over here, it's almost empty, but. We're gonna be taking long shot. This is the fast, obviously the fast uh, side of the equation, the ratio. This is going to go in first. This isn't a blend, you're not gonna be shaking it up. This is stacked, so long shot first under little gun. There are steel loads. I've come up with steel loads. I don't know if I've shown them on videos or not, but there are steel loads um, using little gun. They're just really dirty, really slow. I mean, really low pressures. You got to use a lot of powder and, and the stack height doesn't really work as well. Uh, the crimps aren't as great as you can get just because of the insane volume. You, you're talking 43 to 50 grains, depending on the payload that you're going to be shooting. So, long shot and little gun. This is an ounce and three eighths steel. We're gonna be using number four shot steel plated from Precision Reloading. Their steel shot's pretty good. Um, that's just what I'm gonna be using at the moment. I've used steel shot from pretty much everywhere. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, three inch Chedite or Shadit, however fancy you want to say it or how American you want to say it, it's all the same. So the CX-2000 standard primer, this is not the hot primer. I did not test this with the hot. If this is, if the hot is all you have, I would punch it out and use either the CX-2000 or the Winchester 209 standard primer, which are now coming back online. The, the Winchester 209s are very close to the 6-2000. Everyone that's 
in the know says that they are absolutely interchangeable. And all the testing I've ever seen, they're pretty much identical in ballistics internally. So, Jedi. Ballistic Products, AKA Gualandi LBC 50. Um, this is, this is what I have found to be the easiest to load an ounce and three eighths of steel shot in. This will hold up to number three shot steel. If you go bigger, you're gonna have to drop it about a 16th of an ounce, which is what major manufacturers like Kent, Remington, and I'm sure others do with their steel shot ounce and three eighths load. If you ever cut them open, they weigh 574 grains. They do not weigh 601 grains. They cheat you a 16th of an ounce. So you drop it, if you go higher, you gotta, you gotta drop the payload a little bit and I'd probably go with the higher um, ratio stack load that I'll be showing you here in a minute. But the LBC 50 wad, love this wad, patterns like a beast. Um, probably one of my new favorites, honestly. I, it's just how it is. You start patterning more, you start seeing what stuff does in the field and I've started to accumulate and become more opinionated on components, so. Anyway, so, Jedi, little gun, long shot, LBC 50, number four steel. The ratio that we're going to be putting in, regardless of the little gun powder charge, is five grains of long shot. Five grains. I've got just a little scale here. Grains. I don't know, you guys can't see that. Five grains. Sorry, I'm using the iPad right now, and I know my videography skills sucks, so just the way it is. Five grains of long shot. That goes in first. This is not a speed game. I'm sure you could probably set up some powder measures um, if they're dialed in accurately enough. Um, so anyway, five grains of long shot on the bottom. This stuff fits, this nestles into the bottom concave section of the base wad of the Shedite um, hull pretty much perfectly. It covers the primer. Anyway, the charge that I'll be showing you right now is 32 grains of little gun. This is the higher powder charge. This gets you to 11,244 PSI. So, as always, there's no substitutions with this load. Went way too high on that. This gets you 13, 17 feet per second. This is probably a good opportunity while I'm trickling this powder to talk about ballistics as far as steel shot. There's virtually no difference between 1300 feet per second and 1500 feet per second at 40 yards with steel shot. There is a point of diminishing returns with velocities with this stuff. I think it, I don't know, I can't remember exactly the numbers, but if you look at charts or if you have the KPY ballistic system uh, calculator, you're looking at like 600 feet per second at 40 yards, depend, no matter if it's 1300 feet per second or 1500 feet per second. Your, your 1500 feet per second is gonna be a slightly higher by um, several feet per second, but it's not enough to justify the, the added recoil that comes between the two velocities. It's noticeably different. You will notice a difference in these loads. They are significantly less recoil than you, what you would normally see in like a 1500, 1600 feet per second steel shot shell. So 32 grains, set that on top. I like to, with these LBC 50s, I kind of like to assist the wads open a little bit, kind of get them like that. I don't know, just to have it, I guess. I feel like it gets a better seal against the inside of the the hull anyway seat that in there 
again using Gary's nudgers. Um, I've got a whole set of them from all different diameters. Hit him up if you want some hand loading tools that are really nice. So anyway, we'll go with our steel shot now. Sorry, this has taken a lot longer, a lot longer than the video than I wanted it to be, but just making sure that you guys understand that this is a stacked load, right? This is advanced kind of stuff, so it can be dangerous. You know, cartridges, hand loading, reloading, it's all dangerous if you do it the wrong way anyway. So an ounce and three eighths of steel is 601 and a half grains. Fours. There you go. Fours get you pretty much spot on to the exact the exact weight of one and three eighths. Be even, you know. I guess you can't get any closer than that. So that would be light on payload. If you're going to go bigger with shot, I'd go. I wouldn't go over 601 grains just to be safe, right? Dump that in there. Oop, drop the pellet. Kind of tap it down and settle it in. What I'm going to do now is use my Mech 600 Size Master. This has this is equipped with the. OMV crimp starter. I've shimmed it to get the exact crimp depth that I want. Then I've got the Guype Rabassator dome or middle crimp attached to the, the mech as well. Uh, and then I'll finish it off on the drill press with the with the Guype BN1. It doesn't I don't think it matters which one you use, but I'm just letting you know that I use the BN1 for this load in development. So pre-cramp. <clears throat> I let it sit there for maybe five seconds to get that memory formed. Go down a couple times. Turn the line on. Hold it there for a minute. A little bit of lubricant. Just WD-40. Seems to work really good. you're going to be able to do this on a regular Mac press but there you go 1300 feet per second steel ounce and three eighths number fours that's about as good as it gets um, you can do five grains of long shot underneath 30 grains which gets you 1270 feet per second and 10,400 psi or the five grains of long shot under 32 grains like this load I just showed you for 1300 feet per second. So I'll try to attach the patterns underneath or at the end of this video. Um, it shoots really, really well, light recoil. Should be a great little duck load and help you avoid the powder crisis, shortage, whatever you wanna call it um, that may or may not be going on right now. I'm still debating on whether that's even a real thing. It is with Alliant powders. Hodgdon seems to be pretty available anywhere. So, hope this helps. Um, get out there and pattern your shotguns. Also, Daddy Duck 365 has an online apparel store. Go hit him up for some hats and shirts. They're really high quality made stuff. Again, we've got merch on our website. If you need custom loads or if you want Anything like this, I can pretty much make whatever you need. Steel, bismuth, TSS. Hit me up. Email me at saltcreekammo at gmail.com. And we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.